Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. Here's another installment of Gimme 10, uh, this week dedicated to the, uh, to the sub-genre of Mutant Disco and a little bit of uh, Punk Funk as well. And I love these Gimme 10s because they provide me with a, a chance to revisit sections of my collection uh, and spend more time with them and just get amazed with the, uh, the great records that um, um, I can find in there and, and, and how to bind them with the thread. And the thread this week is uh, Mutant Disco, um, a genre of music that appeared on the late 70s, early 80s New York scene. You have to imagine that there's a, at the time a, a very wide uh, cross pollination of uh, musical styles and, and amazing artists on that scene. You've got, you know, as people as diverse as uh, Grandmaster Flash, Africa Bambata, John Zorn, Bill Laswell, The Talking Heads. You've got um, obviously Blondie, Television, um, you know, Chic uh, with uh, uh, Nile Rogers. Um, Arthur Russell, ESG. So when you think of that scene as a whole, um, there's bound to be, you know, as, as I said, cross pollination of ideas. And um, uh, Mutant Disco is born out of that kind of, you know, effervescence in a way. Um, what you have to also picture historically is that um, in the late 70s, disco has come out of favor uh, in clubs. Uh, and um, um, there's sort of young independent labels that's just come to the fore. I'm going to talk about Celluloid, Z Records, 99 Records, which uh, uh, are essential, you know, um, pieces in that in that story in the puzzle that is uh, uh, Mutant Disco. Um, Mutant Disco itself is um, an amalgamation of, I would say, Latin funk, big time. Uh, disco, obviously, uh, new wave, uh, post punk, and also obviously there's a little bit of no wave there, which is again another subgenre that we could talk about. But you know, we need another video for that. I always like to start with some compilations as you know, like a good entry point. And I think um, you could do worse than starting with something like this disco, the disco, which came out on Strut in 2000. Mutant disco is often sometimes referred as disco in a disco and uh, you know some of the artists there that tell the story uh, bands like material was that was you know or dinosaur which we'll talk about in a minute but this this comp is great it's companion piece disco in a disco 2 is also worth investigating a very very cool sort of like selection and very danceable but you have to imagine also the party scene in New York at the time, and you've got people like Larry Levan, uh, who uh, was at the helm at the uh, Paradise Garage. I highly recommend that you, um, um, you know, dig into Larry Levan. You know, you've got DJs like Nick Ciano, you've got DJs like uh, Francois Carvocchian, um, you know, who actually pushed the envelope and completely reinvent the remix. And it's just mutant disco is basically party music with a Latin edge, uh, syncopated, uh, um, you know, rhythms, you know, funky bass lines, uh, angular guitar riffs. You have a, a total package of like danceability, and it, it's not just you know feet music. It's also head music, I believe. I was talking about the label, so you've got Z Records. Um, obviously, which is a label uh, that was started uh, in New York by two French guys, uh, Michel Esteban and uh, Michael Zilka. And um, these two guys uh, um, named it Z because uh, they were, well, uh, Michel Esteban was French and he, he, he deemed New York was the place to be. You know, that's why the Z, the Z records comes from. I think Z is kind of like the crucial mutant disco label when you can see on the lineup here material, the Bill Laswell uh, led band, essential stuff, you know, was not was, you know, we've done was from Blue Note now. Christina, who was the uh, wife of uh, Michael Zilka, who ran the label, we'll talk about Christina in a minute. So this label is one of the, the main pieces in the story. You obviously have uh, Celluloid, which is a French label founded by uh, Jean Caracos, the founder of uh, BYG Actuel uh, in Paris, and then, you know, um, started, you know, uh, importing that great music from New York, 
And you've got, again, material appears there, there uh, and, and, and you've got Fab Fab Freddy on this, which was name-checked by Blondie on Rapture, possibly the, one of the very first raps, uh, mainstream raps ever. So there's cross-pollination, you know, 101. It's really, uh, this label is very, you know, very fertile, full of ideas. And you've got 99 Records, which was founded by uh, Gina, Frank, Gina Franklin and Ed Baum, in uh, New York on, on uh, McDougall Street. And they had shop number 99 and they named the record label after this. And you've got bands like ESG, obviously, and uh, Liquid Liquid, which we'll talk about in a second. But I'm talking so much because there's so much to be said about Mutant Disco. It's not simple as a story. But I'm, only, I'm going to show you 10 records that I think you should hear and which are great and that just really, you know, make this story worthwhile. I'm going to start with Kid Creole uh, and the Coconuts. Now, this is the second album of The Coast of Me, and it's my favorite Kid Creole record. It's fun, it's loose, it's funky, you know, it's just manic in its sort of energy. Uh, Kid Creole is August Darnell, uh, a legend on the New York scene, and the Coconuts <clears throat> are three, or on this case, four uh, singers that uh, provide backing vocals in a very sort of deadpan way. This opens with one of my favorite songs, uh, Mr. Softy, which is a, uh, you know, a very amusing song about, uh, you know, uh, Kid Creole not being able to perform in bed, basically, and the three coconuts just making fun of him. And uh, there's some great songs like Dario, you know, what, why can't you let me into Studio 54, Dario? Like, it's very, like, when you hear this record, there's a very sort of like New York at the time kind of snapshot. Uh, I would encourage you to to seek this out. It's a very, very, very cool record and very fun. Um, the next record I want to talk about here is this fantastic, um, I think, second record by Lizzie Mercier de Clou, Mambo Nassau. Um, so Lizzie Mercier, Mercier de Clou, she's a, a French um, um expat, I would say, to, to the U.S. She was the girlfriend of Michelle Esteban, who uh, founded Z Records. And um, uh, she started, you know, messing around with punk and post-punk in France and uh, and then arrived in New York and uh, found a, you know, found a scene there and found a voice there. Um, uh, this record was recorded in Nassau, obviously, in the uh, Compass Point studio. And is the work of also uh, keyboard legend uh, Wally Badaru. This record is really super funky, really, again, a lot of great manic energy on this. Uh, and there's a fantastic cover of uh, Funky Stuff by Cool and the Gang on this. But uh, listen to Roommate, uh, Funky Stuff, Slip Disc. Like, this chick could just, you know, she, she she's just amazingly funky and cool. Uh, very sort of energetic music, very dense music. Um, I want to talk about another chick who was, was super cool and really very much sums up the essence of Mutant Disco and it's Christina. Uh, Christina Monet, she was the wife of uh, Michael Zilka who also another founder of uh, Z Records. And this is very deadpan like I think that the adjective that summarizes most is deadpan. Um, there's a, a, a great cover of La Poupée qui fait non, uh, which is a, a song by Michel Pol Polnareff, the French legend. Uh, Jungle Love, the opener, is, you know, um, and then there's, there's this great uh, closer, which is a long, long song called Blame It on Disco, which is again, ironically sung. But again, this is really like danceable, kind of loose, funky, very funny sounding kind of uh, record, um, Christina, self-titled. Um, okay, uh, I want to mention, obviously, Was Not Was, because their sound basically defines also, in part, the, the genre of um, Mutant Disco. This is a self-title, uh, which opens with Ad Come The Freaks. So Don Was, who now you know runs, I think uh, Blue Notes. Uh, he's the bass player in. Uh, um, this is a very again. It's got a bit of a deadpan quality about it. It's super funky again. 
um, and it's it's quite it goes up and down this record some songs are really upbeat and then just bring the tempo down um, but it's something that you could find quite easily I think came out in uh, 1981 or 1980 and I was showing this comp before but the, the the track that you want to hear by was there was is will me out this song so amazingly catchy there's it's an earworm the the hook at the start and w combined with the, the the funky drum beat is amazing it's an amazing piece of music um i'll go into more okay like here is i mean obviously i have to mention arthur russell because i mean you know <laughs> now i don't want to mention arthur russell per se I want to mention his aliases because uh, Arthur Russell uh, came under a, a number of aliases Dinosaur Dinosaur or Dinosaur L so Go Bang is like the Mutant Disco 101 it's kind of like it's the essence there distilled Loose Joints which appears on the Larry Levan compilation that I showed you before uh, it's all over my face really kind of again the epitome of the sound and uh, you also have Indian Ocean, the last track there, uh, School Bell and Treehouse, which these tracks are really incredibly, um, uh, yeah, they're, they're funky and they're very cerebral, as, I think, in, in their own way. So Arthur Russell was a classically trained musician. If you don't know, I mean, I think if you watch, if, if you watch this, this channel, you know about Arthur Russell classically trained musician, lived in the East Village in New York, played the cello mostly, but then it was so interested in all sorts of different music that he made albums of all styles from, you know, country to uh, folk to disco to avant-garde. Like you can't pin a genre on Arthur Russell. He sadly died of AIDS uh, uh, in the 90s, I think, but uh, uh, his body of work is keeps being rediscovered by by generation so i've got other arthur russell records obviously but this is the one i would choose to illustrate uh, the the point um here's a band that maybe not so many people are familiar with it's a band led by joseph bowie uh defunct uh and the album is thermal nuclear sweat this is more a jazz funk record than anything else but it retains the very essence of mutant disco by by way of having this jazz funk and lyrics and you know it's joseph bowie sings joseph, joseph bowie uh was the trombone player and uh on this his band is really like tight and loose as well at the same time with um you know you've got trumpets guitar bass drums uh so it's the the mix of these kinds of um instruments together and and the way they they're approaching the music which to me classifies them in the same in the same box as mutant disco um um now i want to talk about records that are more in the punk funk no wave kind of box for example um this absolute classic by uh, james white and the black off white now james white also known as james chance uh, and also known uh, among um, you know uh, in the band the, the contortions which is also it's basically the same band um is a, a new york musician this this was recorded in 1978 on z records so very worth including in this list um and james white is like a a white version of james brown uh in the sense that he you know he, he's got this kind of um funky uh you know ethos he you know like the music is resolutely funky but with james white it's also squonky and 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 really like um, deadpan and really like quirky and you know like the guy is uh you know he's a bit like you know if you mixed uh james brown and john zorn into one package um contort yourself is an amazing track i think you know Tropical Heat Wave, uh, which is um, the last track on side one. Uh, White Savages, really, really great. Uh, uh, funky, disco-y, punky kind of record. Very highly recommended. Okay, um, I want to talk about Conk now, uh, who were a band on the 99 Records uh, label, I think. Uh, they were like a five or six, pe uh, how many people were in this band? Let me remind myself. 
Um, this was recorded and uh, mixed in Belgium uh, because also with Belgium, you know, you've got this label, Les Disques du Crépuscule, which is also sort of pushing the envelope in terms of that, the post-punk uh, scene. Um, but I think in the US, they were released on 99 Records from memory, uh, 1982. And, uh, you know, you've got a six piece, yes, with trumpets, dr uh, uh, twin trumpet, drums, guitar, congas, bongas, percussion, ba uh, bass, synth, um, and sax. So, the, the, you know, the, the, again, the, the, the instrumentation uh, and the flourish on the instrumentation just indicates what kind of sound you, they were aiming for. Uh, the opener, Baby D, is a monster song. The rest of the record is not probably not as strong except for maybe Elephant which has been heavily compiled on uh, on other mutant disco comps but uh, uh, I would recommend that you take a listen to this record because it's it's uh, it it's worthy of, of hearing in any case um, I cannot mention ESG okay now ESG is like even though they don't belong exactly to that sound I'm describing, they actually do at the same time. ESG, for me, is the most difficult to classify band that I can think of, basically, because they're a punky, funky band. They're a kind of... Um, I don't know if I, I should classify... If I put them in my collection in the in the post-punk section, if I, would, if I need to put them in my funk section. It's difficult because... At heart, it's a uh, an Afro-American uh, uh, group of sisters, the uh, Scruggin, Scruggins sisters, uh, who uh, come from the Bronx, and uh, uh, which are uh, bought instruments by their by their mum uh, in order to uh, get them off the streets, basically, and form a band. And I mean, what a band! I I, I was lucky enough to see ESG a few years ago, for about four or five years. Uh, my wife was still alive five years ago, probably, uh, and they just blew my mind. They just, they just, the package is so small but funky. You know, like there's, there's so few sounds that they make, and yet it's, you know, it's essential music. Um, so you know, okay, it's a great place to start. Uh, you're no good, moody, UFO. There's an EP that they with the same cover. This, this is the um, uh, sound Universal Sound repress from the early 2000s, which I've had for just about 20 years now. Uh, and uh, it, to me, that's enough. I mean, it suffices to my to my enjoyment of ESG. I don't need to go and fork at uh, hundreds of dollars on, on originals, but you know, I, I would recommend this this, uh, this package. And I want to talk about Liquid Liquid. Um, this is a band from New York as well, uh, four piece, uh, drums, bass, vocals, and marimba. If you can believe that uh, <laughs> lineup, very sort of minimal but super funky as well. Again, um, this is a collection of their first three EPs. And the thing to know with Liquid Liquid is they only ever released EPs, the best of the bunch being Optimo which is the third EP, I believe. And, um, you know, this is more, again, more punk funk, more no wave. This is uh, their first EP, I think. Uh, second EP is there. And then Optimo looks like this. If you, you probably have, some, some of you have recited this in, in passing and not knowing what they are. And you've got like the, the title track Optimo, which is amazing, Cavern. Uh, this band really is an amazing representative of that genre. Um, I would highly recommend this comp. Now the EPs themselves, they again, they would be very expensive to track, but everything is lovingly compiled on this. This came out in 2008 on Domino and you can get that quite easily, I think. Um, so look, um, I'm going to finish off now because you know I've been talking for a lot. Uh, I want to do a part two on the UK uh, punk funk scene. I'm going to do that. And maybe even a part three on some modern examples of that sound. If you enjoyed this video, please leave me some comments uh, and talk to me. That's all is needed here. Uh, take care and uh, until next time.